Hello everybody, uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, this is another Q&A video. The question I received is, Brother Luke, I have watched many of your videos and I am greatly benefiting from your teaching. I was shocked to see a video attacking and falsely accusing you about the resurrection. It said that you do not believe in the resurrection, but I know that you do because of written and spoken words. How do you answer the false accusers? Well, the short answer to your question is, <clears throat> I have already answered them, uh, but <laughs> I will try again right now. Um, you said that you know I believe in the resurrection because of written and spoken words. Yeah, it's true that uh, I have already written and spoken many times on this subject, uh, clearly saying I do believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. Anybody who claims otherwise is uh, either very ignorant or just outright lying. Uh, but one of the things that you can do to find out what I believe is if you look at the top right part of my uh, channel it says about brother Luke <clears throat> that is my statement of faith I also have that same information uh, I, I uh, put that in the description of every video so every video of mine that's out there you'll see this statement of faith and it says this about brother Luke Jesus is the object of my faith. Jesus Christ is the eternal God, the only Savior, and the sole source of eternal life. <clears throat> Jesus, now this, these are bullet points after that. Jesus is the eternal God, manifest in the flesh as the Son of God. Next point. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid the sins for the whole world. Next point. When Jesus rose from the dead, he proved he has power over life and death. The next point. Jesus offers salvation and eternal life as a free gift to everyone. And the next point. We receive the gift of eternal life through faith alone, in Christ alone. The final point is, our salvation is eternally secure. We cannot lose it for any reason. So th those are the uh, basics of uh, my, my faith. There's many other things I believe uh, that are, I would call minor points, minor doctrines, but these are the most important doctrines. Uh, the deity of Christ, the death on the cross for our sins, the resurrection, and faith alone in Christ alone, and eternal security. Uh, so uh, it certainly should not be any secret uh, what I believe. And I, I've got uh, many, many videos e expressing this over and over again. So, uh, how did this uh, problem come up where I would be accused of not believing in the resurrection? Well, this happened last year initially, um, but, but first let me say that uh, um, I urge every person, when you're witnessing for Jesus, uh, if you want to tell someone how to receive eternal life from Jesus, uh, I urge you uh, that we tell all the good news about Jesus. We want to tell them everything we can. Uh, uh, as, as long as the person is willing to listen and they have questions, that, that includes uh, uh, that there is one God, and this God exists as Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and this God uh, uh, became a man. He was manifest in the flesh. He became a man named Jesus Christ. And, and the reason he did it was to give his life as a ransom. He, he came here to die for the sins of the world. And when he was dying and suffering on that cross, 
all, all the sins of the whole world were put on him, were charged to him. And uh, that is what paves the way so that uh, we can be saved today because he took care of the sin problem. He paid for all of our sins. And he was truly dead. And he uh, he was buried. And after three days, he rose from the dead bodily. And he appeared to uh, the apostles and he appeared to hundreds of people. He appeared to his brother, James. He later he appeared to the apostle Paul. Uh, he proved uh, that he is uh, resurrected from the dead bodily and he promises that we too will be resurrected eventually. He will, with a voice, call us out, out of our graves and we will be resurrected. So, uh, and it, uh, these are all the facts. This is all the good news. And the, the important thing to understand is that this proves what Jesus did and who he is and that he is offering every one of us eternal life as a free gift if we will put our, all our confidence in him, not in religion, not in our own ability to work our way to heaven, but instead we rely completely on Jesus Christ to save us, to give us eternal life. He is faithful and he, he promised eternal life to those of us who trust him and he will keep his promise and we receive eternal life. So this is all the good news. Uh, but, the, and this is what I've been saying for years on YouTube and uh, uh, personally in my street evangelism and personal witnessing. The, the, but this problem uh, initially came up when Brother Jack Smack made a video. And I, the title was something like, uh, uh, a person doesn't have to uh, believe in the resurrection to be saved, or a person doesn't have to know about the resurrection to be saved. Uh, Brother Jack Smack made that video, uh, and he was attacked by a bunch of people. And when I watched his video, uh, I absolutely agreed with Jack Smack in that video. And I saw him under great attack, and I uh, felt that I was compelled, I needed to uh, so publicly support his position on this. So I made, started making some videos on the subject. Um, so that's how the problem started, but uh, the, the position that Jack Smack and I both have on this and, and many other people is not that we do not believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, Jack Smack's never said that. I've never said that. Uh, I, I proved the point uh, when I started this video with my statement of faith and over and over again, and there's a historical record on all my videos uh, what I believe. So if people say that I do not believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, it, it's an outright lie. Um, but the, the issue is not whether I believe that it is true. The issue is, does someone have to understand it and believe it uh, in order to get saved? And that's the point that Jack Smack and I were, were arguing for. Uh, I basically was making this premise. Of course, we want to tell people all the good news, all the historical facts about Jesus, as I just did a minute ago. That's, that's kind of the long story. That's the, that's all the information. And that helps people understand exactly who he is and what he did and, and the reasons that you, you're now in a position now to receive eternal life if you trust him. But, uh, the question is, does a person have to have all that knowledge? Does a person have to uh, not only have the knowledge, but they, they have to understand it and uh, believe every, every bit of it? And so I proposed this question. I said, suppose that someone is driving down the freeway and they're suicidal. Something happened in life and they're just desperate. And they just don't want to live. And, and they, they see at the Salvation Army Rescue Mission, they see a giant cross. And on the cross it says, it says, Jesus saves. You've probably all seen that cross before. Jesus saves. And in this moment of desperation, this person cries out to Jesus, Jesus, if you save, 
I need to be saved. Jesus, will you save me now? My question was, will that person be saved? Or is Jesus going to say to them, I, I'm not going to save you now. Maybe later, if you'll study and learn all the historical facts about me and acknowledge and make a mental ascent to all these facts that you, you agree with all the, all of the facts of the good news about me. Well, that was the, uh, kind of the, the proposition I put out there and people would divide over that. Some people agree with me that no, Jesus is not going to say, no, I, I won't save you now. Jesus saves all who call upon his name for salvation, whether they understand all the facts or have knowledge of all the facts or believe all the facts, as long as they desperately call on the name of Jesus Christ to save them, they are believing that he has the power to save them and they want, they're asking him to do it. They're putting their faith in him to save them. And then there's another group of people that took the other side of the argument. They said, no, that's not enough. That person would not be saved. Uh, because they did not uh, particularly know about 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. This is really what it boiled down to in that argument, is that they, they believe that uh, Paul said the gospel is the, that Jesus died for our sins, he was buried, on the third day he rose from the dead, and the, they must believe that to be saved. Uh, and, and I have a lot of videos on this. I have a, uh, a playlist, uh, called Faith in Jesus, Not in Knowledge. And there's many videos on that playlist, but basically I want to prove the point that, um, uh, there's people who have knowledge of all these things, but they're not saved. And there's people who are saved who don't necessarily have all the knowledge. Um, so, basically, um, a person who believes that having the knowledge saves them, that would person, I would classify them as a Gnostic. Um, you're probably more familiar with the word agnostic. Uh, you've got atheists, agnostics, and believers. An atheist does not believe in God. Uh, an agnostic says... Um, I don't have the knowledge. That's what Gnostic means, is knowledge. Agnostic means I don't have the knowledge. I don't know. And a believer says, I do believe. So these people who say that you have to uh, have a certain amount of knowledge to get saved, they're really Gnostics. They are worshiping the knowledge rather than the Savior. And I, I um, made a video, and in the video I made the point that the gospel does not save you. The Savior saves you. Did you hear what I said? The gospel, that means the, the good news, the, the knowledge of all this, the, the facts, uh, whether it's uh, two of the facts, his death, burial, or resurrection, or, or whether it's all the facts I cited earlier, including, uh, you know, as uh, man, God manifest in the flesh, the, the virgin birth, the miracles, the death on the cross, the resurrection, the ascension, all, all these facts. How many facts does a person need to know? If you're saved by agreeing to these facts, then how many facts does a person need to know? Well, some of the people are saying uh, these these two verses, 1 Corinthians 15, chapter, verses 3 and 4, those are the facts. Well, I wonder why did they choose only those two verses instead of all eight of the verses in that section? Uh, they, they leave off the last uh, four verses that are also important facts, historical facts about the testimony uh, that the resurrection happened. So, uh, the deity of Christ uh, is, is not only important uh, because only God, the Bible says, only God is the Savior. So, if we believe Jesus is our Savior, uh, then uh, we have to understand that only God can save us, so we have to put two and two together, and we know that, well, Jesus is God. Uh, I'm putting my faith in Him to save us. Only He has that power. Uh, the understanding the cross is important, because 
Uh, what about the sin problem? Uh, how is that dealt with? Do I have to do works? Do I have to become religious? Uh, what do I have to do to have to stop sinning? Uh, if, when we understand what happened on that cross, then we can understand that Jesus paved the way for our salvation by suffering and dying on the cross. He eliminated sin as the issue. So there's no longer a sin barrier between God and man. There's only a faith barrier. Do you believe in Jesus as your Savior or not? Some people have a lot of faith, but they're believing in other things rather than Jesus. Some of those people are these Gnostics that are believing in acquiring certain knowledge. Uh, and then the resurrection, of course, uh, is are very important because uh, how could we believe that Jesus could save us now if he's dead and buried and, and didn't raise from the dead? How could a dead Savior save us? So... If a person took the time to study the Bible and it took the time to think this through, you know, they would certainly understand the deity of Christ, the, the atonement on the cross, and the, the resurrection, and understand all that. But, but my point, and Jack Smack's point, was that uh, if a person didn't have all that knowledge, do, are they not going to be saved? Even though, in my example, someone's desperate to be saved, is Jesus going to say no? Or is he say? You want me to save you, you're putting your faith in me, so I'll save you. Let me give you an example of a, a large group of people who do believe in all these facts about Jesus. They not only believe in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, verses 3 and 4, uh, but they believe much more. They believe in one God, they believe in the Trinity, they believe uh, in uh, the virgin birth, they believe in uh, the miracles, they believe in the uh, uh, in the uh, death on the cross for the payment of our sins, they believe in the bodily resurrection, they believe in the ascension, but they're not saved. Do you know who these people are? These are Roman Catholics. They believe in all those things. They acknowledge they're all true, but they're not saved. Why are they not saved if believing those facts saves them? Because they do not believe the one thing that does save them. And that is that the Savior saves them. They're putting their faith in uh, knowledge of those facts. They're putting their faith in following the religious rules of Roman Catholicism. And then they're keeping their fingers crossed, hoping that they did it all right and they may be qualified for heaven. That is not putting their faith in the Savior. That's putting their faith in religion. So we have probably a billion people around the world that, that do believe all of those facts, and yet they're not saved because they are not believing in Jesus. You see, at the beginning of my statement of faith, it says, Jesus is the object of my faith. That's why I said in one of my videos, the gospel doesn't save you. The Savior saves you. Uh, I believe in the person of Jesus Christ. He's my Savior. Not the fact that I read the Bible or I understand it or I, I believe all of it's true. Uh, that's not what saves me. I can believe all that and yet not ever put my faith completely and relies on Jesus. Uh, now, that playlist I have, Faith in Jesus, Not in Knowledge, has a lot of videos on it, and some of them by me and some by others. Uh, there is one group of people that I highly recommend uh, for just the doctrine of salvation. Uh, and they, I think it's explained and clarified better by this group of people than anybody else I've encountered. And the organization is called uh, Grace Evangelical Society, and commonly called GES. Uh, Bob Wilkin is the, the leader of it. Zane Hodges was a leader, and he's deceased now. So I have some of uh, Wilkin's uh, and Hodges' videos there, and uh, they address this question too. Uh, I was very uh, excited when I found them, them because uh, I wasn't aware that uh, they had written and spoken on this uh, years before I did. Um, but uh, I came to this conclusion independent from them, but but they've got a, a video called uh, The Bare Minimum. What's the bare minimum to get saved? I've asked probably 
50, 100 people uh, personally that over the years, what is the bare minimum to get saved? And it's hard to get anybody to agree. They all have a list of criteria. How many things do you have on your list of criteria that someone has to agree to before they're saved? Well, um, so in the, in the video, bare minimum, that explains what is the bare minimum to get saved. And another one of the videos is the, co uh, the content of saving faith. Saving faith, what does it contain? What is the absolute content that we must uh, understand or, or, or believe? And this is the bottom line. The bottom line is a person, it's possible for a person to have none of the knowledge that I've cited earlier, all the historical facts about Jesus that are true. A person may be ignorant of all that, but if they believe that Jesus has the ability to give them eternal life, and Jesus is faithful to give eternal life to everyone who comes to him for it, then he does give them eternal life, and they're saved. So, to me, that is, that is what I mean when I say Jesus is the object of my faith. I believe in him. I believe he has the ability. Now, obviously, only God has the ability, so he must be God, because only God could give me eternal life. Uh, and I believe uh, that he is faithful, I think he keeps his promises to give eternal life to everyone who trusts him for it. So uh, that is the uh, the sum of the of the whole. Uh, all of the facts about Jesus, yes. I I always tell people everything I can as long as time permits it and as long as they are willing to listen. I want them to know the whole story, all the good news about Jesus Christ. But the, the argument is, what if a person wasn't privy to all the knowledge, but simply called on the name of the Lord Jesus to be saved? Will he save them? He has the power to do it. He promises eternal life to everyone who comes to him for it. I say, yes, he will. And I do believe that when a person does get saved that way, uh, and they uh, get regenerated, as a child of God, they get indwelled and sealed with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God will then do the work to transform them, to get them into the right church, to urge them to study the scriptures, and then they will understand all the other facts later. All right. So, uh, yes, there are a few people out there uh, that you may encounter who have falsely accused me and also Brother Jack Smack and others. Uh, saying that we do not believe in the resurrection. Uh, I hope this video clears that up once and for all. Uh, bless you all in the name of our great Savior God. His name is Jesus Christ.